Who's ready for some football? Are you ready for some football? I'm ready for some football. Okay, we back with the reaction video. It's been almost a week. I know, I know it's been almost a week since the last time we made a reaction video. We got Double Move. The title of the video is Dallas Cowboys Rookie Tight End Luke Schoonmaker is Insane. Dot, 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 dot. Without further ado, let's get into it. had a few people scratching their heads. The team had decided to not re-sign Dalton Schultz during the offseason, and that led to rumors that the team would be interested in some of the top tight ends during the NFL draft. Yes, Dalton. sir. There were ones like uh, Michael Mayer. There was ones like um, Darnell Washington, Dalton Kincaid. But... Um, Darnell Washington was still there, but we decided to go with Luke Schoonmaker. You know. And I was like, you know what? I like the pick. We did get a tight end, and this guy does run like a 4.63 or a 4.5840. So he's fast for a tight end. So he can get behind the defense, you know, maybe run down the middle of the seam, you know, run them seam routes. Like he can he can do it, definitely. So, uh, you know, I got optimism for the kid. Kate and Michael Mayer were two names that were thrown around a lot in the media. So when the team decided to not select either of those guys and go with the tight end in the second round, I'm not surprised people were upset that it was a name that wasn't heavily linked to the Cowboys. But the truth is, the team just got a plus player at the position that has insane potential to become everything you want in a tight end. Luke Scooby yes, sir. is going to have an impact on this offense. So, without any more waiting, let's get into the video. I'm going to say, in my opinion, though, I think that um, Luke Schoonmaker is going to be the starting tight end by week eight. I'm calling it right now. I think he's going to be the starter by week eight. I think that Mike McCarthy is going to see this kid and he's going to be like man i really need to uh put this guy on the field and i think he's going to take a starting role by like week seven or eight somewhere around there because you know i don't know if he's going to get enough playing time for me to assume that he's going to be the starter by week one but i think week eight or so or something like that oh yeah definitely happened a lot of people were not ecstatic about the selection of Luke Schoonmaker in the second round Dang, and I C, understand C minus, the D? it did seem like the Cowboys were going to select a tight end regardless of who was sitting there at pick 58 it might not have been a great value selection in the eyes of draft nerds and that's one mm. reason to worry about the pick the Cowboys might have reached that's funny he uh, says that all right referencing draft nerds there are a lot of them out there that do their mock drafts and they really think that they know what they're talking about. Like, I mean, everybody's board is different, you know? So, like, you know, you're not going to be able to predict everything. I can't remember who. I think it might have been that uh, Brandon Perna from That's Good Sports. But he said he actually predicted every single player that would be drafted and where they would go and i me personally i think that's a lie all right ain't no way bro all right he he's got to be capping his tail off bro ain't no way he predicted the entire first round uh of the draft because that's exactly what he said i'm like no way and some of that reaching conversation stems from school. maybe you can predict who the first <laughs> five or the first t the the top ten but not, not the whole first round. Ain't no way. Maker's lack of receiving production he had at Michigan, which is understandable because we watch guys like Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews tear up the league year after year. The tight end position has changed so much over the past five to ten years that you want a guy that is a receiving weapon 
down the field. A guy exactly. Exactly. Hold on for a second. But, yeah, okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, like, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, we needed an athletic tight end. And Dalton Kincaid, Dalton Kincaid, Darnell Washington, and Luke Schoonmaker were very much of that. Michael Mayer was more the guy who could block and he could really catch the ball very well. But Luke Schoonmaker, what he brings to the table is athleticism. He has speed for the tight end position. He's obviously got size. I think he's like 6'5", 250, 260, something like that. Darnell Washington is the one who's a freaking specimen. I mean, he's 6'7", 260, 270 or something like that. I mean, he is huge. So I forget who uh, drafted him, but, you know... Oh, it was Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh drafted him. I don't know why, though. They got Ed Fryermuth. But, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it is what it is. But I like the pick of Luke Schoonmaker because he's got athleticism. He's got size. He can catch and he can block. You know, like, people will call him a faster Dalton Schultz. And what's wrong with having a faster Dalton Schultz? You know, that was the biggest problem with Dalton Schultz is that he couldn't get down the field, so it was easy to contain him. You know, well, I'm not saying he was a bum, but he, it was just easy to try to neutralize him. This guy, though, Luke Schoonmaker, it's not going to be so easy to neutralize him. He can go short, intermediate, deep. I'm telling you. You're going to see. It can make an impact in the receiving game and be another threat for your offense. My fault, y'all. Um, you know, um, uh, that I'm uh, sniffling. I got a little bit of uh, sinuses issues right now. And despite his lack of receiving production, I actually think that Luke Schoonmaker is going to be a damn good receiving threat in the NFL. At Michigan, Schoonmaker just didn't get the opportunities that we saw from other top tight ends in the class. In yeah, I mean, uh, he was uh, primarily, uh, you know, Michigan was primarily a running team. You know, that was the problem. You know, they were a running team. So, he didn't get a whole lot of opportunities, <laughs> but you saw in his last year, he showed a little bit of something, that's for sure. <laughs> caught just two passes for 54 yards. In 2021, he caught 17 passes for 165 yards and three touchdowns. And then in 2022, he caught 35 for 418 yards and three touchdowns once again. His production rating put him at 14th among tight ends at the NFL draft which isn't great. But the important thing to remember is that he wasn't asked to be a target machine at Michigan. His opportunities to catch passes was extremely limited, mainly because of the Michigan offense philosophy. They were a run-heavy team, and they asked Schoonmaker to be a blocker more often than not. Limiting yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I love it when I'm correct, man. <laughs> I love it when I'm correct. His chances as a pass catcher. His college receiving numbers are not blowing anyone away. But the great thing about the NFL is, it doesn't matter. Whatever you did in college, it doesn't matter when you get to the pros. Although there were... Yeah, just look at Chase Young. <laughs> yeah. That dude has... I mean, he won Defensive Rookie of the Year. Didn't, I mean, he didn't look all that, if you ask me. But, I mean, eh, I don't know. But I've been paying attention. And he has not been showing as much signs of production as people would have thought. Even before he tore his ACL in 2021, <laughs> that season, he only had one sack, I believe. One sack through those first eight or nine games before he tore his ACL. So, how much of an impact on the defense would he have been even if he was out? If you ask me, it felt like the commander's defense was better without him than with him. 
you know, and that's sad on a when you when he was a second overall pick for you. That's sad. Probably 50 tight ends around the country that were more productive than him. It doesn't matter because he has something that NFL teams like and makes him an appealing prospect on the Cowboys offense. Before we continue, we are so close to 20,000 subscribers. I have a giveaway planned, so make sure we hit it before training camp. Hey, subscribe. Subscribe to all my uh, five subscribers. You know, make a difference. You know, subscribe to Double Move. I subscribed. Yeah. I subscribed, you know. Like, you know, I mean, come on. Just press that subscribe button. It's not that hard. In just under four weeks. And to everyone that has already subscribed, thank you. Now, let's get back into the video. The one thing that Schoonmaker has against others around the league Speed. is his athleticism. Which oh, is yeah. what and had athleticism. me so intrigued with other guys in the class like a Dalton Kincaid. According to NFL.com, Schoonmaker tested as the fifth best athlete among tight ends at the NFL Combine. Standing at 6 foot 5, 251 pounds, he ran a 4-6-3 40-yard dash, had a 33 and a half inch <laughs> and a 10 foot 7 broad jump. When it comes to the tight end position, Schoonmaker is super athletic. Yes, absolutely. And y'all saw y'all notice his 20-yard shuttle was a 4-2-7. That's that's crazy. For Cowboys tight ends, I like athleticism. Because when you look at dominant tight ends around the league like a Travis Kelsey or a Mark Andrews, those dudes are athletic. The main thing is, is I think you can coach a player like that up. Work with him to refine his route running, improve his contested catch ability, and play him in situations that benefit him as a player. Although I do think Schoonmaker is a better receiver than people are going to give him credit for right now. You can see it on tape. He's fluid. He doesn't look clunky when he runs. He falls into open zones in the defense. It seems like he understands spacing. He's oftentimes in the right position. There's a lot of potential for him, and I really think it's only up from here. Yes, Another sir. great thing to add on top of that is he's already a solid blocker. So he's going to find his Yeah, lane. and the Cowboys, they normally hit on, you know, draft picks that other experts have a problem with. You know, a la Tyler Smith onto the field early. I think the athletic upside with the proper coaching and scheme around him, you can mold him into a tight like end. They were talking about how, oh, he's he's a penalty magnet, you know? Like, he, he has too many penalties, you know? Like, all right. He's got too many penalties, you know? Like, I mean, oh, like, what? The most penalized team in the league, and they get one of the, the, the most penalized player in college football or whatever. Like, oh, why would y'all do that? Can he play? That's all I care about. Can he play? All right. Can he play? And clearly he showed when he had to step forward in the absence of Tyron Smith uh, that he can play. That is a threat down the seam or on drag routes or just dropping into a zone and getting a first down. Now, I do have to be realistic and a bit negative. I don't like that he's missing OTA practices. I don't like that he missed OTA practices with a foot problem. He was yep. seen wearing a boot around while other guys got his reps. Hopefully that isn't a lingering issue because he needs those now. Or he's going to be behind the eight ball and fall out of favor in this offense fast. Because there's another tight end on this team that I really like in Jake Ferguson. That I think has a ton of potential as well. Schoonmaker is going to have to stay healthy if he wants to be on the field and make an impact for the Cowboys this year. If you want to see my video on Jake Ferguson, it'll be linked down in the comments below, or you can click on it right here, wherever it's at. Thank All right, people. Well, that was a double move uh, talking about Luke Schoonmaker and how he is insane, and he is. He is insane. You know, as long as he can stay healthy, and I think he will be back for training camp. They're just trying to... The Cowboys are just trying to, you know... Uh, the Cowboys are basically, oh, all right, my fault. Um, yeah, so the Cowboys are basically, you know, like, they're trying to be cautious. They're not trying to, like, you know, get this guy too battered up before training camp even starts. So they want to take a cautionary, you know, they want to take a cautionary route, have him in a boot, 
and you know like he's gonna be back for a training camp and you know like do what to do so uh, that rhymed by the way nonetheless um you know that is it so i appreciate any of my audience that is uh, watching this video before you get out of here like if you haven't subscribed subscribed subscribe is really important because you get notified each and every single new video that i post and uh, stay tuned because we're about to make uh, maybe a couple more reaction videos after this so uh that has been my time and that is it peace